Mineral royalties alone, the state is required based on the revenue streams. We are getting more than a billion CDs per annum. Mr. Speaker, when you convert the billion CDs per annum into dollars, it's almost $200 million every year for the state. And even in 2016, the minister confirms that we got about $120 million. And so if you are getting about $200 million per annum, what the, why do you want to rush to go and take $500 million? And what they are doing is to mortgage 75.6% of our mineral revenues going forward forever for this so-called Ajapa company. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the question is, if President Akufuadu, Ghana was your company and you were the board chairman, would you bring this document for us to approve? No. Would you bring this document for us to approve? You get $200 million per annum, and you insist that you want to take 500 million and cede 140 million per annum to a so-called SPV. Mr. Speaker, this is unfortunate. And like the learned former Deputy Attorney General said, this transaction is opaque. This transaction does not meet best practices. This transaction is inimical to this country. This transaction is detrimental to the forward march of this country. This is another Ameri in the making. This is another PDS in the making. Mr. Speaker, this agreement, and what are they saying? The, the, the Deputy Minister says that it is not debt. Mr. Speaker, those who understand finance should listen. You go and borrow money or go and take money and say that this is not debt. I've taken 500 million, it's not debt. But every month, when I receive my income, come and take 50% of that money to service that facility. If this is not debt, what is it? Mr. Speaker, but why are we here? That is critical. And the, the, the chairman of the committee says that we need urgent money. Mr. Speaker, when you took over, our debt level was 120 billion. Today, you have confirmed that our debt level is over 250 billion. You have increased our debt by more than 100 billion. And there's nothing to show for it. And just four months to elections, having realized that you are losing the elections, having realized that there's nothing to show for, you want to railroad and rush through a so-called 500 million facility. Mr. Speaker, when I entered this parliament, I swore an oath, and I speak on behalf of the minority, that we shall do what is good, what is proper, and protect the interests of this country. Mr. Speaker, the minority side, we are patriots. We believe in Ghana. We believe in the right thing. We will not be part of an illegality today, tomorrow, the day before tomorrow, or forever. Mr. Speaker, indeed, we wash our hands clearly. Clearly. Mr. Speaker, this agreement or transaction is repugnant to Article 106, Clause 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Mr. Speaker, we will not be part of this agreement. Mr. Speaker, today is a very sad day indeed. I cannot believe, I cannot believe that this government can bring such an agreement for us to approve. But let me send a word of caution. And let me state that today is the Friday, the 14th of August. 2020 in the year of our Lord, that a future NDC government will not honor this agreement. Mr. Speaker, I want to state on authority to the investors that if you invest in this illegality, you will be throwing your money away. Because God willing, on the 7th of January, by the grace of the Almighty Lord, Mr. Speaker, and I mean by the 7th of January, yes. by the grace of the Almighty Allah, we will
will be on the other side of this chamber. We will not be there. And when we are there, all those who are perpetrating this, you shall be held to accountable, you shall be held liable, and you will have answer for your deeds. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I want to end with a quote. I want to end with a quote. And this is my favorite quote. And let the word listen today. There is a quote that states, and I quote, that the well, that the well, Mr. Speaker, that the well, no, I want them to be quiet. The well suffers a lot, not because of the violence of the bad people, but because of the silence of the good people. We are the good people in this chamber. We will not be part of it today. We will not be part of it tomorrow. And we shall amend this come 2021. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity to contribute to the debate on this report that is currently before this House. Mr. Speaker, what we've witnessed in the last few minutes is a very sad spectacle in the history of our Republic that while the sovereign government of the Republic of Ghana is seeking to raise resources, resources that it will put to good use to improve the quality of lives of our people, we are witnessing right before our very eyes attempts to threaten international investors and well-minded people who would want to invest resources in what the Republic of Ghana is doing. Mr. Speaker, this is something we ought not to mince words about. It is a very unpatriotic act that we are witnessing in the chamber of this house today. That while the sovereign government of the Republic of Ghana as it has done in years gone by, seeks to raise money to invest in improving the quality of lives of people, some choose to threaten international investors and undermine the efforts of the sovereign republic. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to refresh the memories of members of this house that this, unfortunately, is not the first time our colleagues on the other side have indulged in an act like this. The last time they did this, the sovereign government was in the process of completing an international barter agreement with Sino-Hydro of China. Our friends on the other side are the very ones who wrote to the International Monetary Fund, asking them to declare it as a loan agreement and in breach of our borrowing limits and by so doing, seeking to undermine the efforts of the government to raise money for infrastructure projects. Mr. Speaker, before then, they had tried another option. In the Sino version, they failed. Before then, they had tried another option. When the ESLA transaction was being put together, literally threatening international investors and all well-minded persons who would put money into these vehicles, and Mr. Speaker, our colleagues on the other side sometimes think that this is politics or is interesting to say, but it has dire implications for our republic. Mr. Speaker, we are in the business of raising resources to do good for the people of Ghana. If any administration has demonstrated that it has the ability to put resources to good use, to grow our economy and to expand it and to create jobs, it is the Akufuado administration. In the last three and a half years, heading to four years, all the resources that have been made available to this administration have been put to good use either to grow the real sector, either to provide infrastructure, 
or to provide social protection programs for improvement of quality of lives. And we can be sure that every single CD, every single PESWA that is raised will be put to good use. Mr. Speaker, for the uninitiated, the structure of this transaction is not strange. We have future cash flows that will come from royalties. We have the need to raise resources today to do what government has been outlining for a while now. All we are doing is securitizing the future flows of cash for today's investment so that we can repay from the future flows of cash. This structure or this transaction is a very simple structure that has been used over and over again. Today, today, Mr. Speaker, if our colleagues on the other side want to pretend that they do not recall the structure. I want to refresh their memory on the secretization of the road fund that they put in a few years ago. There was a road fund levy that was to accrue to the Republic. They needed resources to execute a particular transaction. They securitized the road fund levy and took the resources up front for investment. Mr. Ahoy. Speaker, what is the difference Atu between Ahoy. that and this? It is, only for someone, it is only for someone who is uninitiated, who will not recognize that the only difference between the two was that theirs was debt and ours is not. Ours is an equity-based transaction, but it is still based on the principle of securitizing future flows. Mr. Speaker, so I'd like to encourage our colleagues that regardless of the side of the divide to which you belong, when the Republic is raising resources to invest to good use, you should support it. And you should not threaten international investors for your parochial political interests. I confirm, I confirm. Mr. Speaker, the second thing I want to speak to is this claim that an illegality is being perpetrated because mention has been made of a prospective amendment which is yet to come through and that until that amendment comes through, it is illegal for the government to set up an entity of this nature and seek to use it to raise money. Mr. Speaker, I want to draw my colleagues' attention to Act 978 and to Sections 3A and B, even without the amendment. Act 978, Section 3, the powers of the fund. A to create and hold equity interest in a special purpose vehicle in any jurisdiction in furtherance of its objects. And the special purpose vehicle shall be free to operate as a regular commercial company. B, to procure the listing of the special purpose vehicle on any reputable stock exchange that it considers appropriate. Oh, really? So even without an amendment coming into force, Act 978 is on all fours with what we are doing in this chamber this evening. This, Mr. Speaker, is not an illegality. I think at a point I heard somebody say it is unconstitutional. We're not even talking about the Constitution. We're talking about an act of Parliament. It is not an illegality. Right. Right. Mr. Speaker, finally, right. I want to speak to the benefits of this transaction as has been structured. And with your permission, I'll read from paragraph three, 531 of your committee's report. Number one. This transaction will enable the Republic to raise a substantial amount of non-debt capital. What they did with the road fund was debt. This is non-debt capital, and it will not lead to an increase in Ghana's debt stock. This is innovative, ingenious raising of funds without adding to the debt stock of the Republic. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, secondly, as an equity capital market transaction, the transaction does not include a repayment obligation all requirements to make interest payments. What they did with road fund was one of the most expensive transactions in terms of interest payments. In the way we have structured this particular transaction, we will not be paid that 32% per annum that they did with the road fund. This will not include a repayment obligation or requirement to make interest payments. Number three, Mr. Speaker, the transaction capitalizes Ghana's revenue from gold royalties while reducing Ghana's budgetary exposures to fluctuations in gold prices and other external factors. Because, Mr. Speaker, anybody who has paid attention to our fiscal tables and the proportions that accrue from royalties knows that it fluctuates. 
depending on the world market pricing for gold and the volumes we are producing. This structure stabilizes how much we are able to raise and appropriate on an annual basis. And it is a structure that I think our colleagues should stop shouting, like the fancy say, well, shout, stop shouting, take their time, appreciate, and support. Mr. Speaker, additionally, this transaction provides a framework for establishing a viable international royalties company that can acquire royalty assets in other countries. Mr. Speaker, many other countries have taken the lead with ingenious funding options like this. We are privileged to be in a dispensation where the people who manage our finances are putting together a structure like this. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage our colleagues on the other side. I want to encourage my good friend who just spoke. In my hometown, we say Papano. 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 I want to encourage Papano to take some time and follow the structure of this transaction and to support it. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Yeah, leadership. Mr. Speaker, I think that Honorable Member. that is not parliamentary. Leader. parliamentary. Honorable Leader. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker if, if the Honorable Minister can withdraw that you. statement by referring to a colleague Honorable as leader. a colonel, if you withdraw that statement. I can't hear what you're saying. I want you to calm down. Wait. Order. Sorry, Mr. Speaker, because of the Who noise, I can hardly hear you. As Papa, no. Sorry, Mr. Speaker, I can hardly hear you because of the noise. Who did you refer to as Papa? No? Mr. Speaker, in line with Order 47 of the standing orders of this House, that says that the proceedings of Parliament shall ordinarily be conducted in the English language, except that a member may exercise the option to address the House in either Akan, Nzema, Ga, Ivi, Hausa, Dagbani, Dagari, or in any other language, provided facilities exist in the House for its interpretation. Midway through my submissions, I said I want to encourage my colleague on the other side who just spoke who in my language will refer to as Papano, who just spoke, to support, to support, to support this motion. So to which honorable the other side, and the honorable John Dinapo is a very good friend of mine. Honorable member. He's a very good friend of mine. So I did not mean to be Honorable member, in this house. Now, now Speaker, I've, I've heard you. I've heard you ask our public to do what is honorable and what respects our standing orders. His referral of a colleague as Papanu. Oh, what he wants to achieve, what he wants to achieve, he can repeat it as many times as he wish. But Mr. Speaker, I'm interested in your ruling. There are many names we can come across from today. Some will dedicate to some. And there are many names. And Mr. Speaker, I know you won't encourage us to do so because I will seek comfort in Dabani or in Hausa or in Gurinsi or in Nakani to use words that are not acceptable and to come to Parliament to employ those words 
used on social media, we take strong objection to it. If you don't withdraw, we will recognize you today as minister. We will refer to you as minister. We will not do what you do. From today, we will recognize you as minister of this department. And we will not afford you any respect as minister. Let's throw it to the dogs. What do you mean? What do you take us for? What do you take us for? What do you take us for? So, Papa, to accept it. From today, on this time, we will not recognize you as a minister of state. We will give you a name. We will give you a name. We will give you a name. What do you take? You go. Good. We will not. And we are serving you notice. He was elected just like you. And his constituents respect him. And you owe him that respect. You can't take this thing that far. Before you people use Papani on social media, you know what it means. You have lost my respect as minority leader from today. We will, we will match with you. We will match with you. Arab members. Mr. Uh, Speaker, we too, bro. we too, we will call you Mahamino. <laughs> Mahamino, Mahamino. Yes, Arabu Majority. Our Order, Honorable Kujo and Order. Who's the other one there who is refusing to keep quiet? Yes, Honorable. You are vested with the powers for the observance of order in the house. When the incident happens, the minority leader comes in to raise issue and call for the Minister of um, Information to withdraw a certain usage. I think that is in order. That is in order. That call is in order. And Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, before the leader himself ended, he then says that from today on, if you don't withdraw, we will not recognize you. Mr. Speaker, space should be given to the Speaker to make a ruling. You don't allow the speaker's face to make a determination, and then you go on to say that from now on I'm not going to recognize you, and then and then and then you also and then you also ended by saying that from now on he's my you know. Yes, that's what you said. That's what you said. That is what you said. Don't bear false witness at all. The man, I'm directly opposite him. Goodness. Goodness. Is that how you are? James, is that how you are? I didn't hear what the leader said. That is strange. If you say that you didn't hear, that is strange. That is strange. And it, it's a very sad comment from you if you say, sitting close to the leader, that he didn't, he didn't say that. Mr. Speaker, two wrongs certainly don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. And as I said, I, I agree. The others provide as to how to address one another. If he goes off tangent, of course, all of us occasionally, all of us occasionally, we slip. 
I thought, I thought that what my colleague said was said in jest. But if he takes offense to it, he has a right to call on the member to withdraw. He has a right to call on the member to withdraw. If he has to apologize, I don't worry. Except the minority leader will also have to apologize to him. Yes. Now you say no. You see, you see how it is. You see how it is. You will now say the minority leader should not withdraw and apologize. If you want to come to equity, you must come with clean hands. Please. You are not truthful if you say that he didn't say that. Let's bring the hands up. You will not be truthful if you say that he didn't say that. Mr. Speaker, I appeal to you. You are the person responsible for keeping order. Our colleague in Apoi is here. If he takes exception, let him say so. The minority leader has already spoken, spoken to that. Mr. Speaker, from the minority leader, from the minority leader speaking for the Honorable Jinapo, I think we can take it. We can make a determination on that for him to withdraw. And I will demand that the minority leader equally withdraw what he said. When the speaker makes a ruling, rather than, can I have a quiet thing? Can I have some order at the leadership benches, please? In this house. In this house. I don't remember the number of times that a speaker presiding has ruled that the member should apologize or withdraw that he has willingly done that. They will find all kinds of means to avoid withdrawing. And John, you were guilty of that when I ruled that you were wrong. You changed what you're saying and rather restated the thing and pretended that you didn't say what you said. My ruling was that it is inappropriate according to our rules to refer to a member as any other name or title other than by what the rule says, by the person's um, constituency or by his office or position in the house. That is what the rule says. Now, or you may call a friend the other gentleman. What the honorable member said in P, translated in English means the man. If you're offended by him calling you the man, or that man, that man, yes, better. That man translation, if you're offended by it. But otherwise, on so many occasions, one of us on either side of the house has erred by referring to other member by the name or by even I often make that mistake by sometimes struggling to get the constituency name or inadvertently mentioning the other persons by name. I don't remember anyone being asked to withdraw and apologize because they referred to a person by a name other than what he has ruled. I have only said that you're not entitled to call the person by a name other than what they're um, they're standing or they say. The honorable minority leaders, I don't know whether to call it threat or anger, demonstrated. I pretended to overlook it because I think it is in the spur of the moment. And knowing this house, tomorrow we'll get away with it. But some insist on making an issue out of it. I don't think we'll, get, we'll gain anything as a house by pretending that that is new. And the threats do not come to anything. So the house will proceed.